Okay, guys, so we're getting ready to uh, start the webinar. So if you weren't here from the beginning, I encourage you to um, tell me what issues you would want me to address. And maybe I'll have time to squeeze them in into my presentation, right? So the question was, again, like, um, what is it, what issue in your life is holding you back from um, achieving success? We will go through a whole list of issues. And obviously, I'll tell you how we can use Feng Shui to get to a much higher success level than we're at right now. But just that um, I want to adapt to your needs, to your questions, to your uh, issues that you're facing so that you can get out of this as much as possible, right? So just drop me a line, tell me where you're from, and tell me what would you find most useful if, um, if that would change, okay? So... <laughs> right, okay, guys. So we have people from all over the world, from India, from France, from the United States, from Romania, from many, many, many countries. Okay, guys. So keep those lines going. I'll still read them as I can. But let's get this party started. So today, today we're going to talk about um, how we can achieve success using Feng Shui. Now, I, I need to... Um, the, I need to focus on one thing before we go into the feng shui part. Yeah, and actually, this is going to be the first part of the presentation. Yeah, so the idea is that um, the, the feng shui does not by itself assure success. Okay, so disclaimer that I want to really, really stress out you cannot just use feng shui and completely ignore um, other life principles that assure success. And those are different depending on where in what area of your life you want that success to be. It can be financial success. And obviously, if that you need a strong financial education, you cannot achieve financial success without that. So, you know, some, sometimes one of the questions that I sometimes hear is, you know, uh, if feng shui is so good in making uh, abundance, yeah, if, if, you're, if it can really... Uh, build up money and cash flow and assets. Why aren't all the feng shui masters incredibly rich? Well, actually, some of them are, some of them are not. But what, what, what makes the difference is uh, one, what their focus is. Some don't want to be rich. For them, richness means to be healthy and happy and at peace. And some are not really concerned with material stuff, right? And others would like to have the material side, but they don't have the financial education, right? So feng shui is just an amplifier. And this, I really need you guys to understand. Feng shui will amplify, if it's good feng shui, yeah? um, whatever you do. So if you put in the work, it'll amplify what you're getting. If you don't put in the work, it's not going to amplify much because it doesn't have anything to amplify. If it's bad feng shui, whatever you do, it's actually going to diminish. Yeah? So times 0 0.5, for example. Okay, so, right. What do you need to do? So this is one of my favorite quotes when it comes to uh, feng shui and of actually when it comes to success in general, right? Uh, in order to get the results that only 5% of people get, you need to do the things that only 5% of people do. So this is very reasonable when you listen to it, when you hear it, but you need to take it into account because um, every so often I, I meet with people and they request um, a Batsu reading or a Chiman reading or a Feng Shui consult and they all want to be successful. Come on, everyone wants to be happy. Everyone uh, wants to be happy in relationships, in uh, you know, health, um, cash flow, abundance, career, authority, and all that. So we all want all of life to flow our way, of course, okay? But are we able to do the necessary things? This is very, very important, right? So everything that relates to feng shui, guys, that I'm going to present to you this evening, I mean, it's evening for me, I don't know where you are, um, but everything that I'm going to present to you related to feng shui will only apply if you have the other stuff that we're going to start the presentation with already there. Otherwise, it's not really going to happen, yeah, because feng shui needs to amplify something. 
If, for example, you want feng shui to fix your relationships, you need to, to work at those relationships because yes, feng shui will improve the chances of the, the um, uh, relationship succeeding. It will improve the, um, you know, the opportunities to feel good and for harmony and all that. But if you, you know, if you do something that is, uh, you know, complete nonsense, Feng Shui is not going to save you from there, right? So this is very, very important, guys, yeah? I need you to take note of this. Okay, so moving on. Um, let's see what it is that makes up that 5%. And I want you to be very, very honest with you. Now, I don't know you, or even if I do, I'm not, I don't know what your detailed life is, but you do, right? So. I'm going to ask you these questions and I need you to ask yourself these questions uh, and see how many boxes you check, yeah? Uh, the boxes referring to the things that successful people do and the boxes that refer to what unsuccessful people do. And you need to be very honest with yourself because before or at the same time as applying Feng Shui in your life, you need to make sure that you start going towards that 5% uh, of people who are highly successful, okay? So you need to change your activities too. So let's uh, explore, first of all, you know, the reasons why um, people fail in general, right? And the number one reason in my experience is that they have vague objectives. I'll give you uh, an example which Unfortunately, I encounter all too often. And this example is, uh, I go to someone's house and I ask them, you know, the number one thing that you do when you do feng shui is, uh, you ask them, what is it that you want your feng shui to help you with? And they would say, well, you know, kind of everything. You know, I want uh, to be happy. I want a happy relationship. I want to be healthy. I want to have a good career. I want abundance. I want it all, right? Okay, yes, of course, yeah. I mean, if as a consultant, I see something that is going to uh, significantly impact you in any of those areas of life, um, of course, I will make a certain recommendation. But what it is in this moment of your life, in your life in particular, yeah, what makes you a specific individual human being, um, that would make a very real difference. Let me give you an example of the right answer, okay? I'll give you an example of the right answer uh, based on, let's say, cash flow, okay? And an example would be, I want to increase my cash flow by 30% in the next 12 months by improving my number of customers, for example, right? So it's already quite specific. Uh, a, a bad example would be, I just want more money. Okay, so where's that money gonna come from? It's, there's nothing bad with more, wanting more money, but what are you gonna do to get more money? You need to have a business plan, you need to have a plan for whatever, right? Um, okay, but let's say it's not about business, it's about uh, health, okay? So I want a better health. What do you mean by better health? Are you suffering from something right now or do you just want to uh, have an overall balance in your health? You're not suffering from anything, but you just want to make sure that the feng shui is not hindering you, right? So is it that you're suffering from a disease? Is it that you've had a history of problems with a certain organ or system in your body? Because feng shui can actually pinpoint these. It can focus on these and it can, um, make sure that you're uh, spending time eating, sleeping, all that um, in the areas that are actually benefiting very, very specific organs and systems. That's the power of feng shui. That's the focus of feng shui. But can you have the focus of feng shui? Because if you just need something that is very vague, you're not gonna get very far, right? Another example from relationships this part. I want a better relationship. What does it mean? for you to have a better relationship. Some people, uh, for them, a better relationship can mean a more stable relationship, okay? So maybe, you know, less fighting, for example. For others, it may mean more time together. 
For others, it may mean, well, you know, the, 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 the passion is kind of gone and it's kind of flat, so I want to spice up my life. For others, it's, you know, I don't want him or her to be cheating on me. So you need to go to this specific level of detail because happiness is something that is something that everyone wants and is completely vague. Yeah. What does happiness mean for you? What needs to change in your life? In what area? So that you get there. So this is very, very important. Yeah? This is why I've spent so much time uh, on this one. So make sure that whenever you're defining success, you make sure that you define exactly what success means for you. Second one, yeah, passive or negative attitude. Um, a passive attitude is like, you know, I don't know, I just need the government to change, the boss to change, the workplace to change. I'm gonna change or I'm gonna ask for a change anywhere on the outside of my life, but not inside, yeah. It's like there was a joke at one point um, which went like this, you know, um, one public speaker talking to a crowd, you know, and he was saying, who wants change? Who wants change? And everyone, yeah, yeah, we want change. Yes, we want change. Yeah, hands up, everyone. And then he asks, who wants to change? Silence. Yeah, nobody wants to change. Yeah, normal people, the 95% of people that are not successful, they don't, need, they don't want to change, yeah? But the 5% of the people who are truly magnificently successful, who are outshining all the rest, do want to change because they understand that uh, it is their responsibility to change, to adapt to the world that they live in, in order to achieve success. So you need to be proactive. You need to have a can-do attitude, yeah? When I go to people's houses, sometimes I encounter this attitude that, you know, it's like, you know, um, I need to do some recommendations. And sometimes even before I start doing it, I, I see people so eager, so thirsty for change in their lives that uh, it's like, you know, I've actually had people come up to me and say, Octavian, you know, if you want to, if you need me to, uh, demolish walls in the house, if you need me to demolish the whole house and build it up again, I'll do it, yeah? If you need me to plant a wall there and put a window in, in, in a wall that doesn't have a window, I'll do it. Anything, if you can tell me that that's going to help me, yeah? And on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I've had people who, uh, to whom maybe I've recommended, no, move your bed one meter further, yeah? Or half a meter that way, because it's a much better energy in that corner where compared to here. I said, oh, to move, you mean to move the bed? As in the whole bed? As in a whole meter that way? Oh, no, no, that's too complicated. Yeah, too complicated. So it's like those people have a problem for every solution that you, you, you get. So uh, that's, a, that's not an attitude that's going to get you very far, right? Further on. Lack of specific or valuable skills. This applies very much to career, right? So this applies to people, and I've actually had people uh, like this in consults and in that, and they said, oh, I want, I want, you know, uh, can you help me with feng shui get a uh, pay rise? Or maybe can you help me with feng shui um, get a higher uh, role, a key role in my company, like a promotion, for example? And I said, yes, of course it's possible, but do you deserve it? Uh, yeah, I think, yes, of course, I deserve it. Uh, yeah, yeah. What makes you think that you deserve it? You know, are you the most hardworking in the team? Uh, have you done any specific courses? Are you the most experienced? What exactly is it that makes you think that you qualify for a promotion, right? So, and this is kind of, I, when I ask this question, I always get these faces like, um, I don't know, I, I never actually thought about this. You know, I just want a promotion. Yeah, well, what do you do for that promotion to happen? So it is un incredible for me to see how many times people don't fail at feng shui when it comes to success. They fail at life. They, they fail at common sense. And I need to go through this with you guys because it might just be that in some areas you have, you know, some of these attitudes, but maybe don't, don't even realize, yeah? I've seen it all too many times. And in probably four times out of five, 
when it's not possible. It's not possible not because of feng shui. It's not possible because of the wrong attitude or the lack of skills or not even being aware that there is a whole problem which is not seen in a different area rather than feng shui. When feng shui is the problem, but the attitude is right, I'll tell you what happens. That person wants to move mountains and is ready to move mountains if that's what it takes. There's that rule. Do whatever it takes. Yeah, this is very, very important. Okay. So what else do people who fail do? Yeah, they lack planning. They, they don't plan, you know, they have a very vague idea about what should happen, what could happen. Um, if you ask them something like, you know, where do you see yourself in, let's say, uh, five years? I don't know. Somewhere else. But where? Yeah. Where else? <laughs> you know, this, is, this makes all the difference in the world. Because people with a plan and with objectives, yeah, they do get very far. People, uh, there was a quote, I can't remember from whom, I think it might be from Thomas Edison, but I, I can't guarantee it, but I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it. It was like um, something like, the main reason why people are not successful is that they are wondering generalities instead of meaningful specifics. And this sums it up so nicely, yeah. Another one, yes, I do all the work. Yes, I do, you know, everything that is uh, expected of me, but I have such a low self-esteem that I just get pushed over, right? Thankfully for that, we do have something related to feng shui. So feng shui can help you with that directly. Low adaptability, meaning no desire to change. I'm going to do things my way as I've done them so far. I don't care that it hasn't worked for 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. I'm going to keep doing it and I want you to help me succeed, uh, but I don't want to change at all. Yeah? No, you need to be adaptable. You need to understand how you need to change. And when it comes to feng shui, you need to be adaptable to changes in your house or in the way that you use your house. So you need to take uh, note of this, right? Another set, yeah? Poor time and life management skills. Oh, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want this, yeah? But how are you gonna organize it all? How are you gonna cram it all in? Or little personal growth. This is another one. In my experience with um, reading a lot about personal development and uh, going to a lot of personal development courses, um, which have helped me enormously. I've seen time and again that the people that I encounter that don't actually go forward, especially when it comes to finances and career, but not only that, it also applies to health and relationships, it are the people who actually don't learn. They don't want to learn. They're not interested in learning something that will actually give them a better perspective yeah so if you keep failing at one aspect of your life if you keep having the same uh problem let's say in relationships don't you think you should maybe read up on it or maybe go see a therapist or go talk to someone who has more experience in relationships yeah or if your problems are financial read some books about finances improve your education whatever you want to do this time of our lives is in the information era. There's no time like today where information has been easier to get than now. But you need to reach out and take it because if you don't, solution is out there, your problem is here, solution never gets to the problem because you don't reach out to take it, right? So again, applies to financial and any kind of specific education depending on the area that you're interested in. So enough of that, let's talk about what people who are successful do, yeah? First and foremost, they have a proactive attitude. I've mentioned this before. It's a can-do attitude, yeah? So I take it upon myself that it's my responsibility to get to that success, yeah? It's my responsibility to adapt. It's my responsibility to understand what I need to do and maybe what I need to do differently from what I've been doing in order to get to that success. Another part is they have a plan. They have a very clear idea of where they want to be in five years time, in 10 years time. You know, they, they have a life path, which is pretty much 
at least in broad lines, if not in more specific lines, quite defined. It doesn't mean that they know exactly where they're going to be, but at least they have a, a, a very clear idea of where they would like to be, right? And very, 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 very important, smart objectives. What are smart objectives? Once you have a plan, you need some objectives deriving from that plan, which are like milestones. And SMART is an acronym, yeah? Let me clear that out for you. So SMART objectives means that those objectives are specific, yeah? I don't just, you know, I want more money, no. How much money do I want, yeah? I want, let's say, $10,000 more a year, or I want to increase my income by 15%, right? That is specific. I just want more money, not really gonna cut it, yeah? Uh, measurable, yes, put numbers to it, yeah? It doesn't need to be exact. It doesn't need to be, yo, yo I, I actually meant to say 14,500, not 15,000, it doesn't matter, yeah? But you need to put some numbers if it's possible. Of course, um, measurable does not necessarily apply to health or to relationships. You can't say, I want my relationship to be 15% better, yeah? But for most other stuff, especially for finance and career and all that, for the external world, this is very, very good, yeah? Um, actionable. What does it actionable mean? It, it means that an objective, if it's actionable, it means that you actually can act in a certain way to make it happen, right? So what does that mean? Um, it means that, let's say you want to increase your income by 15 or 20% um, in the next 12 months, okay? It's specific, it's measurable, but is it actionable? What does that mean? It means you need to couple it with an activity that you are going to do for that to happen. So in order for it to be actionable, you need to um, formulate this objective coupling an action to it. So I want to uh, earn 15% more in the next 12 months by increasing the number of clients that I'm seeing or by um, upselling 20% more of what I'm doing or by uh, loyalizing my clients or whatever. Yeah, this is a financial example, but this Try to um, apply it in any area of your life that is um, relatable to this because the action part is really going to qualify, um, is really going to clarify what you need to be doing in order for that to happen, okay? Of course, it also needs to be realistic. If you're earning $2,000 um, a month, and you say from next month, I need to earn $200,000. Okay, are there people who earn $200,000 a month? Of course, yeah, there are people who earn $2 million a month. But is it realistic for you to jump from 2,000 to 200,000 in a month? I don't think so, yeah? And um, time frame. You've noticed that I always put a time frame on it, yeah? So, you know, I want to increase my um, income by 15%. Yeah, in 15 years time, even by inflation, it might get there. But it doesn't mean that it's what I'm actually referring to. So in what time do I want this objective to happen? You see, the magic of time frame is that it creates urgency. It creates, uh, you know, come on, you know, time is ticking. If I've put a deadline on it, uh, it motivates me to you know, plan backwards from that deadline. What do I need to do until then? And what's the timeline for it, yeah? So this is much more specific, and this is what makes it smart, because this is what makes it realistic and actually transforms those objectives in reality, rather than just them being stranded on a piece of paper that you forget somewhere, okay? What else do people who are successful do? they have an informed time management. What does it mean, informed time management? Usually, the more successful they are, the more likely it is that they've actually educated themselves when it comes to time management. And actually, it's not so much time management, but it's life 
management. Yeah. So it's not just how to cram in more things in 24 hours. It's actually to uh, make sure that those things that do get your attention and time are the ones that really matter, right? So it's not so much about time management, although that is implied, but it's more about life management, making sure that each day, all the activities that you do are relevant and important to you and your goals that you set in the future. Another thing, communication skills. It is so important to have communication skills in all realms of life, relationships, um, uh, obviously financial and career. And I can tell you, I, as a doctor and therapist, these are incredibly useful for patients coming to see me or coming to see any therapist. Because if you don't have communication skills, the poor thing treating you is not going to understand what it is that your problem is, uh, you know, causing. But and the right education. The right education. It doesn't mean that oh, you want to an Ivy League school. No, the right education means you make sure that you educate yourself. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter that you finished school five decades ago. I don't care. The successful people make sure that they take their education very seriously. And this is an ongoing thing. They self-actualize continuously, right? So there's a saying for that, you know, don't let school interfere with your education, right? And in this part, this is where feng shui actually comes in. So, sorry guys, I know that you might have been thinking until now, hey, you know, I thought I was coming to a feng shui thing about success and I'm getting a personal development class, you know, what gives? Well, unfortunately, success has its rules. You cannot apply it, and I'm, sure you, I'm sorry if I've uh, bored you until now, but I've seen this one too many times. You cannot uh, escape all those. You cannot pretend that those don't exist and then try to achieve success by using feng shui. And when that fails to compensate for all the other crap that you're ignoring, blame feng shui because it's not working. I'm not gonna have that, yeah? So I make sure <laughs> that you know <laughs> so that uh, you actually apply, okay? But this, this is where feng shui comes in, right? So it just happens sometimes and there are numerous examples. Some of them, maybe you know personally, some of them are historic in nature, yeah? That the, some of the most incredible examples of success are just uh, about being the right person at the right time in the right place, yeah? So it could have happened to almost anyone, but it happened to that guy, yeah? Why did it happen to that guy? Because of that. So it, this does not negate everything that we've talked until uh, talked about until now. It just puts another layer onto it. And this is what feng shui can give you. Feng shui can give you the opportunities, and it can pull to you the right people. Yeah? Even if you don't know them now, it can pull them in your life. And this is the magic of feng shui. Yeah. So this is what can really amplify the success that you're already starting to build by doing all the rest. So in the rest of the presentation, we're going to focus on how we make sure that these three things are derived from feng shui, yeah? So, but do take a note, I, I need you to understand that it's all about um, putting the foundations there first, okay? So, Let's talk about feng shui as an amplifier. This is what it is, right? So when you're, when you're doing all that, when you're uh, putting all that effort in and when you have the right direction and the planning and the objectives and the right attitude, this is where feng shui really comes in because this is where it really makes a difference, yeah? This is what differentiates people who do all that from and are not necessarily very successful. They, they are successful, but they just don't necessarily get the right opportunities compared to other people who maybe are actually doing less than they are, but get enormous opportunities presented to them on a platter. And this is where some people might be feeling that uh, life isn't fair, yeah, because those people are getting something that they don't actually deserve. Sooner or later, you know, it will equalize, but uh, this is why you're here, yeah? You're here to understand how you can get the benefits of this, 
right? Right, so how do we use feng shui for that? And this is, this is uh, where you need to understand how feng shui works, okay? So how, what would you say if I told you that you can use feng shui as a tool to foresee events, yeah? This is something that is incredible and it gives me great pleasure and great satisfaction to uh, go into someone's home and do the measurements, do the feng shui, and then look at the chart and tell them, listen, you know, uh, you've been going through this, 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 this is how your life is, this is how your personal life is, this is how your finances are, this is how uh, the relationship is, the health is, and all that. And people usually are, they're, you know, they're kind of stunned because um, it's, you know, what, what is it? You know, why, what's going on? How can you tell that? How can you actually see? Right? So step one, feng shui helps us in foreseeing events that maybe have not yet happened, or if you've just moved into the house, or they will happen because in feng shui we also have a time frame. Right, so I see that someone is raising a hand. So yeah, if you have a question, please uh, write it in the chat box, okay? So, I'm gonna give you an example, actually several examples of how we can use feng shui to foresee the events. And it's gonna be a practical example. Uh, actually, the whole second part of the presentation is gonna be very, very practical. And I'm gonna share it with you uh, how I did this for some clients of mine. And it's gonna be a kind of walkthrough with me. Yeah, so you're gonna see this part. Another part is, so imagine, yeah, you look at a house and you see that various parts of the house have their own story, right? So you have this part of the house, which is incredible for maybe business, but very bad for health. You have this one, which is very good for, I don't know, marketing. You have this one, which is very bad for business, but incredible for relationships, yeah? And you know that the more time that person spends in that sector, that's the story that they're going to live out, okay? So this is very important because once you understand the story and you relate the story to the area of your house, all you need to do is just choose, yeah? What do you choose? You choose your story. You choose what story do you want to have? What story do you want to focus on? And how do you choose it? Um, there is a saying in business that people choose with their feet or they vote with their feet. What, what does that mean? It means that if they go into a store, they've, they've voted that they like the store, yeah? So once you've got a customer in your store, you're already doing a good job because you've got them in. This is why people vote with their feet. But here in Feng Shui, we also vote with our feet, but at a completely different level. We vote with our feet, meaning that when we choose where we place ourselves, we choose the story of our lives. That is so, so important. And this is feng shui in a nutshell. Uh, some people think that feng shui is about placement of objects. Guys, it's not about placement of objects. Feng shui is about placement of people. Where you are in your house or in your apartment, in what area of your apartment or house are you? And what happens in that area? Once you learn to see, you will by definition choose, yeah? Let's pretend that you'd have some special goggles and you would see that that area is full of abundance when it comes to finance. If that is your objective, wouldn't you choose to do that? Wouldn't you choose to be there and place yourself there? Of course you would, yeah? So it's a natural thing to do. But what else can we do? We can also unblock things. Sometimes it's not that we're not getting the results, it's that we're encountering innumerable obstacles. Yeah, we're kind of getting there, but 10 times more difficult and 10 times slower than we should. And it's frustrating because it, it always seems to be a different obstacle, but for some re reason, it keeps happening to you, right? So what is the diagnosis there? The chi is blocked, yeah? So you want to unblock it. Can we do that with feng shui? Yes, this is one of the hallmarks of what we can do with uh, feng shui, right? Step four, once we've done the first three steps, actually, once we've done the first two, three steps, you don't actually need to go further, yeah? But should you want to be uh, wanting more, should you be able to uh, actually hold on to more, yeah? 
we can also amplify what is there, right? So we have amplifiers in Feng Shui. And that's a whole new level. Yeah, that's a whole different level on top of the first three. So these four are the key that, uh, the key to success that Feng Shui presents to us. And I'm going to exemplify to you very practical examples. Yeah, but in order to uh, understand what I'm going to talk about, I need to present uh, to you some of the, um, the lingo, some of the basic things uh, that are related to Feng Shui, yeah? So someone asks what step three was. Step three was unblocking, okay? Right, so moving on. So Feng Shui as an amplifier, yeah? What we're gonna talk about. Step one is to foresee. So I'm going to present to you some of the very basics of Feng Shui so that you understand how it's done, right? And we're going to uh, talk about two different schools of Feng Shui. One is called the Eight Palaces and one is called the Flying Stars. And we're going to combine them. I'm just going to show you the very basic stuff. Yeah, there's much more advanced level of Feng Shui, but even with this very basic stuff, it'll be very easy for you to follow me and understand how Putting them together, we learn to foresee things in an apartment or in a house, okay? So we are going to start with the, uh, the eight palaces, yeah? And I'm going to guide you one by one through them. And it's very, very easy. And you'll see that it, once you are understanding all this, it's going to be child's play to, to read the story. It really is, yeah? So first, uh, sector is called Shengqi, yeah. It doesn't matter the Chinese name, yeah, but do make a note of it, yeah. So, wherever the Shengqi in your house is, that sector is related to prosperity, it relates to how you earn your money, okay. The Tianyi sector, the, the, the second sector, is related to healing, yeah. So, if your focus is on health. This is where you want to focus because this sector in your house is related to healing. Now, these are just main correspondences. We don't have enough to make up a story. So what makes up a story? In each of these sectors, we're going to uh, encounter what are called flying stars. That's the other uh, school of Feng Shui that we're going to look at. So the flying stars that you have in each of these sectors is going to define how you get your prosperity, how you get your money. And of course, if you get it and how much you're getting, right? Because maybe you have some very bad stars in your prosperity sector. Maybe your house doesn't even have a prosperity sector because your floor plan is actually missing out some spaces, yeah? So we're, we're gonna e exemplify all that. So you'll know by the end of the presentation uh, what I mean, how we do it, yeah? Similarly with the Tianyi, yeah? With, with all of these sectors, we look at the flying stars and we see what the story is. So with the flying stars in, in the Tianyi, we learn to see if this house is actually supporting health or not. So if you get uh, sick, yeah? If you get sick, how much is this supporting, how much is this house supporting you to get well again? Okay, so this is very important. And also get help, meaning uh, help from helpful people. This is very important because sometimes you just need uh, the right connections for things to happen. You need to know the right people. Remember, needing to know the right people because the right people can open doors for you, facilitate things. This is the sector responsible for that, yeah. So how do we use these sectors? Uh, we're not there yet, but just to uh, anticipate a little bit, we vote with our feet, yeah? So we just are present. What do we want more of? We want more healing, we stay in this sector more. We want more prosperity, we stay in this sector more, yeah? What to do if the prosperity sector is actually having bad starts? More on that later on, okay? So we'll have some practical examples on that. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Another sector, it's called the yan yan. It's the relationship sector. So in this sector, uh, we're going to see what the story of the relationships in the house is. So this is very important if your focus is on the relationships because long term, this is going to be the story of your life when it comes to the chapter of relationships. And then 
we have the stability sector. What does the stability sector or the full way mean? It means that it's how grounded, how at home you feel in a certain house. You might notice that when you go to someone's house, what happens is that uh, you feel very soothed and very calm and very relaxed and, and you have a feeling that, oh, you know, I feel so good in, in that person's house. And then you maybe go to another friend's house and you can't wait to get away. It's like you're feeling restless, agitated, and you just want to go away as fast as possible. This sector is mostly, most closely associated with this feeling. You know, how much at home do you feel? How rested do you feel? How centered and rooted do you feel? It, it can be the full way of the house or it can be your own full way. That's another story. Then. Cool, hi. So this is, uh, we've done the four sectors which are largely positive and now we're getting into the other four sectors which are to a degree or another um, negative, yeah? So this is the least negative of them. And this relates to just, you know, just um, small obstacles. Um, it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're driving along a road and there's an animal crossing the road and you just need to slow down, you know, push, push the brake and just have, give the animal time to, um, uh, to pass and then you resume your journey. It's fine if it happens once. If this is a rule, you're actually going to slow down very, very uh, much because you keep breaking and you keep breaking and you keep breaking. So your average speed is going down. So if you're spending time in this sector, that's what you're going to get. By the way, guys, yeah, I want you to think about one thing. You are spending time in some key areas anyway, right? So you are spending time in your bedroom because you sleep there seven, eight hours a day. You are spending time significantly in an office if you work from home, seven, eight hours a day, maybe. You are spending another portion of time maybe in the living room or on your couch or in the dining area. Yeah, there are certain focus points in your house that you spend much more time in rather than in others. For example, you don't spend that much time in the bathroom, I would presume, at least not compared to the bedroom, okay? You don't spend time in your closet because you don't go into the closet and stay there. You don't spend time in technical places, like for example, the place where you have the central heating and all that. But nevertheless, you know, feng shui doesn't differentiate between them. So my question to you is, what do you think that, as in terms of sectors, what sectors do you think that you're spending most time in? And would it be nice if you actually knew? Because if you knew, yeah, if you had the power to understand all this, you could actually see what the story is. Of course, you know what the story of your life is, but do you know if, for example, it's because of the feng shui of the house? And maybe, maybe that one and a half meters or two meters from where you are, there's an incredibly much better sector what if you could know that so that with just the, the, the change of the bed or the change of uh, where you sit or some other changes like that, you could radically uh, change your life. It's as simple as that. Because if we foresee, if we understand this, it's just a question of choosing uh, the right choice. Yeah, making the right choice. I'm choosing to not sit in the sector of small obstacles. I'm choosing to sit in the relationship sector or in the health sector or in the prosperity sector, yeah? Not to mention the ones that are coming, yeah? So for example, um, this one is relating to gossips. Now, traditionally, this is a negative thing, but more modern times, it tends to have also positive qualities because when people talk about you, you know, sometimes, especially if you're in business, there's that saying that there's no such thing as negative publicity. But it can be something that is also in the realm of defamation. Yeah, people might uh, talk behind your back and, you know, they might persuade other people that you're a bad person or you know, whatever. And then you have the really nasty ones. Yeah, this one, Yusha, is called the big obstacles one. So if you're spending a lot of time in this sector, what's going to happen is that you're going to uh, see that slowly but surely 
the obstacles in your life become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, the worst of the worst is the chiming. Yeah, so the chiming is called the disasters um, sector. Now, this is not going to be happening overnight. This this system of feng shui is actually uh, a very long-term system of feng shui. So it's only going to act in 10 to 15 or 20 years time. Yeah, so it's not going to you're not going to really feel it in the first two, three, five years. But then slowly but surely, it's going to gain momentum and you're going to feel it more and more and more and more, right? So what happens in this, in this one, yeah? If you spend a lot of time there, you see that everything you do from business to relationships to health to everything that's important to you is crumbling down. You know, you build it up and it's crumbling down and you need to start over again and it's crumbling down again. And it's this feeling that um, you know, everything that you do is crumbling. Someone asked what kind of disasters, anything, you name it, yeah? Disease, uh, bankruptcy, uh, divorce, anything, yeah? Of course, again, yeah, we're also uh, interested in what the flying stars are in this uh, sector. And of course, there are a lot, of, a lot more other factors that need to be taken into account, but uh, if, you know, how, how big the disasters are, how uh, positive or negative they are, meaning that, you know, sometimes it can be positive because you're fired from one company, you know, but you managed to get a better job at another one, right? So, yeah, someone asked if the entr entrance is in Germany. You want to change that, yeah? So it's not, uh, it's not so much the, um, uh, it, it's not really a problem if that's for short term. So if you're renting a place out and you're going to stay there for two, three, four years, that's fine. But if you're owning the house and you plan to stay there for you know, the rest of your life, definitely you don't want to have the entrance onto you yeah? because you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah? So, okay. So then we uh, want to also talk about the flying stars yeah so i've already given you some some hints about the eight palaces but in order to get the story in each palace we need to talk a little bit about these flying stars yeah so i'm just giving you very uh short bullet form information so that you uh, find it uh, easy to digest so what is star one associated with and by the way if you're wondering why it's called Star One and it doesn't have a fancy name, it actually does have a fancy name. So the name of Star One is called Tan Lang. But because in Feng Shui we do a lot of, you know, permutation with stars and all that, it's just much easier to write a number. It's just shorter rather than to write the full name. Because as you see, we'll be doing a lot of combination of stars. So this is why it's, it's just a form of shorthand. This is why it's called Star One. So this has to do with loyalty, yeah? So if your focus is on loyalty, whether it be in business for making return customers or it might be in relationships and you wanna make sure that the partner isn't cheating on you, this is the star to use, right? It is also a star that is cultivating fame and recognition and wisdom and depth and people relate to you if you're using this star in such a way that they say, oh yeah, 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 I respect them. Yeah, they're very good. They're, you know, so they, uh, it really amplifies uh, recognition and fame. Star two is very, very good for business opportunities. So if you're an entrepreneur and you want to increase your business by getting uh, more business opportunities, this is incredibly good. Uh, however, don't sleep on it. Don't, uh, don't have it in your kitchen. If you have it in your kitchen, you need to kind of move from there because if you have it in your kitchen, especially as what is called a sitting star. Don't worry yet if you don't know what a sitting star is. Yeah, um, it is generating uh, problems. Yeah, so you don't want star two to be where you sleep or where you eat yeah? or in your dining area. So uh, it's a very good star for business, but not so good star for health. If you're only working there, it's fine. You're, you get the best and you don't get the sickness part. Right. Um, and then star three. Star three is very, very good if you need more courage, if you need more initiative, if you need more self-esteem. 
but it can also have a negative implication because it tends to generate aggressiveness, it tends to generate fights and arguments, so you need to be careful and it's very much about who is using this, yeah, because if they're already a little bit irritable, that's going to really make them explode. If they're shy, then it might be good for them, right? And then moving on to star four. Star four is associated with academic success. It's associated with uh, arts and creativity and especially with written communication. So if you want to learn better or if you want to teach better or you're generally working in an academic environment, star four is going to be very good for that. And then we get star five. Now this one is the worst of them all. Yeah, this one, in 99% of the cases, you want to avoid this one, right? So this one is kind of like Lama. It is able to destroy everything in its path. And at the same time, just like Lama, it is creating new forms where there was none before. So it's kind of reshaping the whole environment. And the huge advantage of star five is that it enables the users to be complete disruptors. Like for example, think about um, uh, Jeff Bezos with Amazon or Elon Musk with Tesla or um, you know, the founder of uh, Alibaba, Jack Ma. So uh, you, these people are disruptors of industry, but, yeah, but very few people get to be there. Yeah? And they need to make some very, very hard decisions and they need to go through a, an incredible number of failures. And it, it, the road to success at that level is definitely far from easy. Yeah? So it is extremely volatile, but it's also extremely powerful if, if you can harness it. So this one, for 99% of the people, uh, you would want to avoid it. Yeah? So if you identify it in anywhere, in any place of your house, best uh, thing for now, until you become an expert in feng shui is just stay away from it, yeah? Okay, so, uh, star six. What does star six uh, have to do? It has to do with uh, leadership, it has to do with decisions, it has to do with planning, it has to do with the head, yeah? So a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of decision making, yeah? So this is very good for um, top managers or people in decision, positions, or it can just be good for yourself as an individual if you need to be more decisive and get some clarity in your life and make the right decisions or just be better organized, yeah? Uh, star seven, all about communication, yeah? So star seven is about talk, 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 talk. Of course, this is very good if you're teaching or if you're doing public speaking or if you're training people or, um, uh, it is also, also good for relationships if people are kind of, you know, um, introverted because it stimulates discussion. So if there's a problem in relationships in which the two partners don't, uh, don't talk about some things, this is very good because it opens up those subjects, even though it, it might be that those sub subjects are sensitive, but you're not going to get over the sensitive subjects if you just pretend that they're not there. Yeah, so uh, it's always better to talk about issues rather than not to talk. Uh, and then star eight. This star is very, very good for everything to do with stability, everything to do with uh, cash flow, uh, everything to do with uh, predictability. Generally, it is employee level cash flow, right? So when I talk about cash flow, I don't talk about uh, business level or entrepreneur level cash flow. I talk about employee cash flow. So, you know, it's kind of slow and steady, but at least it's steady. It's predictable, it's good, it's overall positive. Uh, so if you need to bring something on an even keel, yeah, so maybe it's your health, maybe it's your relationships, maybe it's your finance, maybe it's your career. Star eight is a very, very safe and very, very good starting point for anything that will, you know, um, be more in the future, but it's a very good start for that. I wouldn't use it if you want to change. Yeah, because if you want to change, star eight is the exact opposite of change. It's stability. Yeah. So sometimes 
when, when things are stuck, the opposite of stability is what you want. You want change, you want initiative, you want to disrupt a little bit these things. Um, Cornelia asks if star eight will not lose its good attributes in period nine. Uh, it will still use, uh, it will be uh, positive, yeah. But in period eight, the star eight was also getting additional attributes, meaning that um, those additional attributes meant that it was also the most prosperous star simply because it was in season, right? So now in period nine, it's not in season anymore. It's kind of um, descending energy. So star nine is in, in season, so it's more prosperous. But regardless, star eight in itself, completely separate from any period, is very, very good. It's just not going to be as powerful, right? But it will still be usable for cash flow or stability. That's what it does. And finally, we get to the last one, yeah? So star nine. What is star nine all about? It's about being visible. It's about um, passion. It's about laughter. It's about socializing. It's a fire star, yeah? So it's, it's very uh, hot and very passionate and very, you know, there's a lot of laughter and there's a lot of socializing and a lot of partying and a lot of talking and a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff happening generally, yeah? But it's associated with visibility. In relationships, we use it for passion. In uh, business, we use it for visibility or marketing, yeah? And in career, we use it to be more visible, to be taken into account for getting key roles or promotions or pay rises, right? So this is how we use it. Okay, guys, so now that we've discussed all this, and this has been just a very brief introduction, let me walk you through uh, a practical example in which I'll showcase to you how we use the four steps to success in feng shui. Yeah? So I'll tell you how we foresee things in a certain space. I'll show you how we can then choose because that's the natural uh, next step. Once we've seen what happens, we then choose the story that we want to be in. And then I'll also show you uh, on the same example, how we can see the unblocking part and the amplification part, yeah? So by the end of this, you will have a much better idea about how strong a feng shui is. I'll also tell you some, some good stories. And bear with me to the end because I have some very, very special bonuses waiting for you at the end of the presentation for, for uh, uh, sitting with me and hearing me out. Uh, because if you have patience until then, it means that you're actually looking for a change. So the special bonuses that I will give are meant for those people who are looking for a change. And uh, I hope that you guys are not here just for the ent entertainment part of it, um, but you are actually looking to make a change in your life. Yeah? So that's who I'm uh, going to be talking to. So let's make it very, very practical, okay? So this is how, um, this is how you look at a floor plan. This is what a floor plan looks. But uh, Analia says, what would you assign being rejected several times for a visa and delays in legal papers? Blockages, yeah? So uh, blockages. And I would ask you, you know, if, if you get that a lot, or only in this period of time, yeah? These are questions that uh, you should be looking into because if generally speaking in your life, you get these rejections and blockages a lot, it, it's very likely that you have a feng shui problem and that the chi in your house is blocked. Anyway, I want to draw your attention right now to the blue areas in this floor plan, yeah? because the blue areas are actually areas which are outside the house and they are actually missing, yeah? Why, why do I say that we're missing them? In feng shui, when we look at a floor plan, ideally we would want something that is square or rectangular. Any other shape, the more it departs from the rectangular part, the more likely it is that it's going to have some missing sectors, right? So what do we do with such a shape? Well, first of all, when we visit a house, we need to take some measurements. We need to see how the house aligns to north, south, east, west, and you know, uh, the other cardinal directions. So this is what a feng shui consultant does. Uh, he or she measures the house or the apartment. Yeah? The, the, if you have an apartment in a block of flats, that's what um, 
the consultant will measure, and you get to something like this. Okay, so let us assume for for this example, which is by the way a real example of some of my clients, that the house facing is where the arrow points, and going there with the law pen or a compass, um, you can see that the arrow coming towards you is in the south. Yeah, so this whole thing is the south, and in feng shui we actually care about what part of south. Yeah, so you see here south one, south two, south three. So based on this, we then are able to compute the sectors that I was telling you about and the flying stars, where exactly they are. Yeah, so I'm not going to bore you with the technicalities of that. If you want to learn how it's done, and if you want to uh, do it for you guys to learn how you can do it for you and maybe for others as well, stay with me till the end because there's going to be some bonuses is that exactly on that for you guys. Yeah. So everything that I'm showing you, I will also be able to teach you should you want to take this in your life. Yeah. Okay. So we take the, the facing of the house and then we start to put the sectors uh, on the map. On the floor plan. So this is where you get them, right? Um, this is just an example, guys. Even though it's a true example, don't worry about the technicalities of how we get these sectors done. If you're interested in that, you'll learn. I'll give you the information. I'll give you the the links and all all the resources necessary for you to learn how it's done. But let's see what we do with them, right? Okay. So um, this these are you remember the um, the sectors of the house, the, um, the eight palaces of the house. So we see, for example, here we see Fu Wei. So remember that Fu Wei was uh, related to uh, stability. Yeah. So I'm just going to draw here. So for example, yeah, Fu Wei, this is about stability. Yeah. Um, Wu Kui is about uh, people talking about you, right? So let's say that based only on eight palaces, yeah, you, uh, you want people to talk more about you. You want to be more present in people's discussions, right? So what do you do? You make sure that you're present in this area of the house, right? So what do we have here? Yeah, this is uh, a room. Yeah, so can we be more present there? Yes, of course we can. Yeah. What if your focus is uh, on healing? Yeah. So on healing, we use the Tianyi sector. But the problem is that in this particular case, the Tianyi sector is in the garage. So what, what can you do? Unfortunately, not very much because it's not very comfortable to sit in the garage for long periods of time. Or this here is a hallway, right? So maybe you, you can sit here in this hallway or anywhere in this sector, yeah? Because this whole thing is the Tianyi sector, okay? So this is, not, this is something that you want to take note of. The whole Tianyi sector is related to healing. Is this house good for healing? We don't know yet. We need to look at the flying stars before that. But before that, uh, we already see that there is a problem because the whole Tianyi, at least on this floor, is uh, not actually usable, right? But if there's a further upper floor, yes, then it becomes usable if you have an actual room there, right? And let's see, here we have the Shenqi sector. Remember that the Shenqi sector was used for um, prosperity. This was the pr prosperity sector. You see that this whole thing, this part here, sorry, I'm going to use another uh, color so that you see this part here is missing. Yeah, so that's almost half of the whole prosperity sector that's missing. So already you can start to see what the story is. What is the story? Just on, based on this, you can see that this house if we're taking into account only this ground floor, uh, it's already visible that the house has a health problem, yeah? If you live in this house, you're going to not necessarily have health problems, 
But once you do have health problems, it's not going to help you um, get better very quickly, right? So if you do get sick, it's probably going to take you significantly more time to heal than if you hadn't been sick. Again, this is not true if you have an additional floor and that floor has the full TNE, because then, of course, you can use that sector and that's it. Uh, more importantly, when it comes to, to prosperity, if we're only using this part, this ground floor plan, yeah, we see that half of the prosperity sector is missing. What does that mean? It means that uh, we are going to have significant difficulties in this house to earn an income, right? So already you start to see how things unfold. You start to look at each sector individually and you start to uh, see the story, yeah? So already on this floor plan, we see that we have a health problem, we have a prosperity problem. How are the relationships, yeah? Relationships are here in the yin yang. So here in the yin yang, um, once we look at the yin yang here, yeah? We see that this is pretty much okay. There's a little bit missing, but mainly it's fine, yeah? So we take them one by one. This is what we're going to look at. So now let's add another layer, right? So now we have flown the flying stars and please don't get scared. I know there's a lot of numbers there. This is why we use numbers and we don't actually use the names of the stars because it, be, it would get very crammed very quickly, right? So let me just uh, guide you through a couple of examples so that you know what I'm talking about. Let's start with the full way. So for example, when we talk about the full way, yeah, remember that the full way was uh, the root of the house, how we feel in the house. So what's the story of the house when it comes to the root? How do people feel at home? When you ask this question, how do people feel at home? You look at the Fuwe and you look at the flying stars. So what do you see here? Nine and nine. So there's a lot of nine. Uh, put away the five for now. So there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, joy and happiness. And there's a lot of that thing, yeah? So people in this house are gonna be jolly, they're gonna be happy, they're gonna smile a lot, they're gonna laugh a lot. Uh, maybe they're going to uh, throw parties. But then, if you learn feng shui, you also learn that a double nine combo is a combination that also means spirituality. Yeah? Um, nine is also associated with visibility. So people living in this house, they're actually going to be more visible yeah, for, the, uh, for, the, um, for others, right? So for a promotion, for anything else, okay? Someone is asking that uh, a missing part or a missing sector is supposed to be a third. Now, and that is only when you actually um, establish the center of the floor plan in order to put this in the right place, yeah? So don't confuse it with that. If, uh, I'm not gonna go into much technicalities because this is not the point. If you want more details, I invite you to uh, Stay until the end because I'm going to give you some bonuses related to learning feng shui. Uh, we're going to talk about the feng shui course that I'm going to open up for you guys. So if you want more technical advice, there's a lot in that, right? I'm not going to bother the rest of the others with technical stuff because this is not the, the webinar for it. But it is a very good question and I'd be happy to answer it at length, but we don't have time for it now. So we have already seen that this is the story of this house. But let's ask you know, more specific questions. Like for example, uh, what is the story of relationships? How are relationships in this house, yeah? So we look at relationships, yeah? And relationships are here in the yang yin sector. And here we see that we have stars one and eight and four. So just looking at one and eight, one is about loyalty, eight is about stability, right? Already a very good thing. When four comes in, it's also about the opportunities that people are getting. So they're loyal to each other, life is stable, their relationship is stable, and they're also concerned about learning. Maybe they go to courses together. Do you like the story of this house when it comes to relationships? Wonderful. 
okay? However, let's talk about prosperity, right? So let's talk about uh, people. Hang on a second. Let's talk about how people earn their income. You know, what, what can this house tell us about the prosperity, about the money earning capability of this house? Well, first of all, we've already established that it's weaker than it should be because this whole thing is missing, right? So half of the uh, prosperity sector is missing. But putting that aside, uh, what's the overall flavor of money making in this house? How does this house support people to earn money? Well, we look at Flying Star 6 and Flying Star 3. Flying Star 6, remember that had to do with uh, leadership and decision making. And Flying Star 3 is about courage, right? So a lot of leadership, a lot of courage. So this is a very good house if it comes to people needing leadership and needing more courage and more self-esteem to speak up. It would not necessarily be the most um, adequate one if people don't have those problems because star three, for example, is not a money star. It is only a courage star. So if you don't need courage because you already have it, actually star three is going to make you a little bit more aggressive and it's not gonna bring any kind of prosperity your way. So let's say, yeah, so I've shown you guys how it is that we see these things, yeah? So uh, let's take it a further step. Yeah, I want to show you how much further you can take it. And just a little bit, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to scare you guys, right? So I've added another layer. So until now, we've only talked about the things in, in, in blue, right? So for example, this was the, the prosperity sector of the house. But we also take into account the people living in there. And for this example, I've taken uh, a real example of two people living in this house. And for one of them, this sector, which is the prosperity sector of the house, for one of them individually, it's also the heavenly doctor sector. And for another one is the difficulties or small obstacles sector. What does that mean? Yeah? It means that the sectors in blue are related to the house, meaning that is one layer which is going to apply to everyone in the house. Yeah? But let's say that we want to know more about the, uh, the, the prosperity of these guys as individuals. Yeah? So if you have five people living in the same house, these are going to be different for each of them because each person has their own individual structure. So let's say we get this person here in, in yellow, right? So um, everyone in the house is going to be impacted by this 6-3 combination and by this partially missing sector, yeah? But more specifically for him, let's assume that it's, he's in yellow and she's in red, okay? So we look for his prosperity sector. And we see that for him, the prosperity sector is this one. Now here we have a 6-3 and here we have a 3-6, okay? So for him, not very different, yeah? Pretty much same idea as here. But let's look at her. Let's look where she has her prosperity sector. So her prosperity sector, the one in red, is here. So for her, the story of how she is going to make money in this house is actually given by this combination of stars, okay? So I am pretty sure that by now, I've kind of lost all of you who are new to feng shui. I've completely made a mess of your brains and you don't understand anything anymore, okay? So let's just stick to the previous examples in which we don't care about the individual ones. Yeah, we only care about the house because it's, otherwise it's too much information. But I hope that already, guys, you're starting to see that, you know, the, uh, each sector has a story. And then we get to the interesting part, yeah? So once we've understood that each sector has a story, how do we choose the right story? It's pretty straightforward, yeah? 
Marjolaine is asking, is the Shang-Chi uh, for a house always southeast? No, of course not. So each sector is going to be different depending on the facing of the house. Yeah, so the, the sectors, yeah, the, the Tianyi, the, the Wukwei, the Fuwei and all that, and even the flying stars, they're all based on how, what, what direction the house is facing. And also when the, the, the um, when the uh, house was kind of born. <laughs> yes, Ramon, I know. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, moving on. Okay. How do we choose? Yeah. Next step is after we've seen what the story is. Yeah. How do we actually choose? Now, if you guys have any, um, any questions or any, you know, uh, theoretical questions about what I've, you know, how the sectors are determined and what is each of the flying star combination uh, means. Um, this is only meant to give you a broad image, yeah, because obviously there's a lot more to know so that you, you know to decipher the previous image fully. Yeah, so don't even go there. My main point was to just exemplify how using the little information I gave you, you can start to read the story of a sector. And now we're going to listen to how we can choose, right? So let's say, uh, let's imagine, yeah, this is, uh, this is not real, yeah, this is just a uh, theoretical example, but we're gonna use this as if these clients in this house uh, would have this request. Yeah, let's say that um, uh, they're, they're a couple and let's say that uh, she says, uh, well, you know, he's always consumed with work and he never has enough time for me. Right. Let's say that this is the problem that we're trying to solve. So this is obviously a question of not only recognizing what is going on, but also implementing some changes. So that's where the choice part comes in. Okay, so how do we do it? Let's pretend that he spends a lot more time in this room rather than in any other room, right? So what's the story there? Well, the story there is the following. Remember that I was telling you that generally we don't like star five. So what do we have here? Yeah, we have star five. Let's imagine that their bedroom is in that room. That's gonna really affect um, their relationship, yeah? If it's a working room, it's going to affect the, 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 the work part, the money part, the earning. If it's a bedroom, it's actually going to affect the, the relationship and the health, right? So actually because he's consumed or they're both consumed with uh, the money problems, this is actually going to impact their relationship, okay? So this is the story. And uh, do we care about the fact that we have a four there? No, because four is an academic star, it's a pretty good star. Uh, but we immediately see that in, the, in one of the main sectors, one of the most important sectors in which people generally spend a lot of time in, like for example, uh, working from home, office, yeah? Seven, eight hours a day, if you spend that much time in there, it becomes a very important part, yeah? or uh, sleeping uh, quarters, yeah, so bedroom. Again, if you're sleeping there for seven, eight hours a day, this is going to impact you in a, a, a strong way. So you don't want to have a star five in any area that you spend much time in, right? So we already see that this is a no-go, yeah? This needs to go away. This needs to change. So that area needs to be avoided, okay? So where do we put them? Well, the idea is that she would want emphasis to be placed on relationships. So what have we seen? We've seen that the relationship palace, yeah, the yen yen here, is this one, right? It's the south palace. And we've seen before that the story of the relationship is good, yeah, it's one eight. But you see, this is where the question becomes, how do we choose? We choose with our feet, we choose with our presence. Yes, the story in the relationships part is good, but it's, it doesn't have as much strength if my physical presence is in a sector in which I have bad stars. So how do I change the story? I change 
by choosing to be in a different room, okay? So where, where would I want to uh, be? Well, for example, for relationships, and also bearing in mind that this is actually very good, I would actually choose this one, yeah? So this here, this area of your house, you can actually put a bed in, right? Unfortunately, that's the kitchen, so you can't sleep in the kitchen. So again, theoretically possible, if you could actually sleep on the floor in on the kitchen, yeah? Um, would you get the benefits? Yes, you would, but obviously completely impractical. Luckily, there's a whole uh, level above it, yeah? So we're going to go with that and see where we could recommend this couple to uh, sleep. Sorry, hang on a second. Uh, right. So we move to the upper floor, right? So we already see that we have a number of uh, bedrooms to choose from. So we have, for example, this whole bedroom. This is one option. This is another option. This is another option. And this is another option, right? So we have four options to choose from, right? So which one would be the best? Let's see, right? So we overlap the same flying stars, the same uh, sectors, yeah? And then we choose, and then we see, okay? So in this part of the bedroom, we have stars eight, one, or here, one, eight, yeah? So this one is pretty good, yeah? Here we have three and six. Now three and six is good for self-esteem, but actually for relationships is not so good because this three might create arguments. Yeah. So generally, not avoid, not uh, not something to be uh, chosen unless you want to give those people some more courage. This one by default out of the question, so that's a no-no. And this one again is very very good. Um, but actually, because of the two, that would be much more suitable as an office, right? So I wouldn't necessarily use this one. I would use one of these, right? So then the question becomes, okay, so if I've decided on this one, yeah, but I have two sectors here, I have the southwest and the south, which one do I choose? If I look at the flying stars, 8-1 or 1-8, they're pretty much the same. There are some minor differences, but not incredibly big, yeah? But what if I look at the overall sectors? Yeah, you have here the relationship sector and here the disaster sector. No brainer, right? If I know what to read, if I, if I am to choose between the disaster sector and the relationship sector, nobody's foolish enough to choose the disaster sector. Of course, that's only gonna impact things very, very long term, so five years and beyond but people are gonna live there for five years and beyond, yeah? So because of that, I'm going to choose this one, right? So actually this area here, yeah, in this sector here, that's the winner, right? That's how we choose. We see, we read the story, we choose it, and that's it, right? So guys, just uh, give me some feedback until now. Are you with me? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Can you understand this? Do you find it interesting? Is it uh, new information for you? Is it useful information to you? Drop me a line. Uh, I would normally be doing this live, but I, 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 I don't have uh, any uh, feedback. Okay, so it seems that you guys like it. Okay, if, um, if you have any uh, questions, short questions, drop them in. I don't, I, uh, I don't guarantee that I'm going to uh, answer them all because this is not so much about Q&A, but I'm trying to, you know, uh, keep uh, feedback, uh, keep a link between you and me so that I, I don't lose you guys uh, uh, talking about, uh, <laughs> I don't know what, okay? Good, right, so time to move on then. So you've seen how we see the picture, how we see the story, you've seen how we choose. Let's move on, right? Let's say that um, there's another request. Yeah, let's say that the request is not related to uh, relationships. Let's say that it's related to business. But as I've said in the first part, we want to have a very clear request, yeah? 
I want to improve and grow my IT business by getting more opportunities and collaborations, right? So the focus is on getting opportunities and collaborations. That's very important, okay? So how do we proceed? Well, we see that the shang -Chi is pretty much shot, uh, but we can still um, counter that by choosing a very good sector for working in. Luckily, as you've seen in the, in the previous example, the, um, the, I think that the upper floor doesn't have this missing piece, so that's good, yeah? But e either way, yeah, um, we can choose in which sector to work so that we uh, get the results that we're talking about. Okay, so how do we do it? We do it by choosing the right styles. Remember that opportunities related to business were related to star two, okay? So where do we have star two? We have star two here. We have star two here. And we have star two here, okay? But notice that in all of these places, star two is in a different position. Here is what is called a facing star. Here is what is called a base star. And here is what is called a sitting star, okay? So sitting stars, meaning always the, the, by convention, the sitting stars are the ones on the left. The sitting stars are to do with the, um, with the personal uh, side, yeah? The health, the relationships, yeah? Do we want star two to be on the personal side of life? No, because if you remember, star two is a sickness star, okay? So I don't want to use star two for personal things, personal relationships or health or all that. So because star two is, here is in the sitting position, that means that that's where it's aimed, okay? So no, I'm not gonna use it here. Even if I don't get sick, I'm, it's actually not aimed towards the outside world, so I'm not really gonna get any benefits from it here. What about here, the base star? Yeah, what does the base star do? The base star uh, here is related to opportunities. Yeah, it's related to what comes my way. Very nice, yeah? It kind of is very good. Yes, it's workable, but actually there is a better alternative because enter the facing star. Yeah, the facing star is the one most closely related to how we deal with the outside world and how the outside world responds to us. So here, this star is the best place as a facing star to uh, help us uh, benefit most from it. What is more, yeah, the question was, or the request was, how to improve business through collaborations. Here, two and seven, and two and seven, they are what is called in feng shui a he tu combination. Any combination in feng shui generally means people coming together. So this is very, very important because it really enables uh, people to get together, especially in business, you want partnerships, you want collaborations. So happily, and this is just in this house, it doesn't necessarily happen in other houses. This is very specific for this particular house. Uh, this sector is wonderful for exactly that. And you, you mentioned, uh, you, you remember that the, the person also asked about the IT industry because he had an IT business. Guess what? IT is a fire industry. And this combo, two and seven, the two seven combo in Hertu, this is feng shui theory. I don't know it, I'm telling you right now, uh, is a combination that makes up another element. And this element is fire. And guess what element is the industry of IT? Industry of IT is fire because it has to do with electricity and that's fire. So this is perfect. Yeah, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Don't imagine that you can get such a perfect combination so individualized for people's needs in any house. No, this is just, they're lucky, okay? They're lucky uh, if this is the case because this is the ideal. The only not ideal part is that it holds in the garage, okay? So <laughs> a little bit of a problem there. Luckily, we have an upper floor. And in that upper floor, remember that I was telling you that 
I would be saving that for an office. That's what I would be recommending. So how do we use it? We use it by making sure that the person who wants to achieve those results spends time there and does the specific activity that relates to those results. So meaning he or she works from there. So you make a home office there, you work from there, you, uh, you try to get those collaborations and the rest is history as they say, nature and the whole universe will come to you, right? Okay, with me guys, yeah? Are you finding it easy to follow? You understand what I mean? I'm getting into a little bit more theory here, but I'm trying to exemplify it with, uh, with examples, yeah? So did you understand this example? Yes, no, maybe? Hello, guys. <laughs> Marjorie says, why is the garage in there? Uh, there is no door that is not belongs to the house. Well, actually, there is a door. Yeah, there is a door here. There is a door somewhere here. Yeah, here, somewhere. I, I can't see it right now. But I, uh, it is a door. Yeah, there is a door there connecting the two. Yeah, which is why I've included it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, moving on. Moving on. So, we move on. Sorry. Okay. So, this is the upper floor. And obviously, here we have the opportunity to place this person in this sector and you see here that there's already an uh, office but this initially was supposed to be the the child's bedroom right and this is not suitable for the child the child doesn't need business opportunities because actually that's energy that he or she will not be able to use okay but i would put the child somewhere else yeah okay so let's move on We've seen how to read the story. We've seen how to choose the story that we like, the story that supports us. How do we relate to unblocking energy? Yeah? What, and what, why do we care about unblocking energy? Because we want two things. We want things to come easy and we want things to come plentiful, right? So we want the opportunities to come and by choosing the right stars, they will come. But there might be obstacles on the way. You might get the opportunities, but in a very, very difficult way. So you don't want that. You want opportunities to flow nicely, naturally, the collaborations to come nicely, naturally, for things to flow evenly. If, it, if they don't, it means that something's wrong, okay? So we need to explore what is blocking them. And also, you might be getting opportunities, but how much? How many opportunities? How often do you get those opportunities? So this becomes a question of volume. And obviously volume is a function of flow. So if things are blocked, you're not gonna get very much, okay? Or you're gonna have many, many problems in making those uh, opportunities uh, really manifest if you have blockages. So let's try to see, and this is just one level, guys, yeah? In feng shui, there's, there, there are many levels uh, many layers to see the whole house through. So I'm just showing you a very uh, basic level to uh, just prove a point, yeah, to just uh, show you how we can see some of these things. So when we talk about uh, unblocking stuff, there's one thing that uh, we need to take uh, note of, which is probably the most important thing in feng shui, and that is the main door. Why do we care about the main door? Because the main door is kind of the mouth. Yeah, it actually is called the chi mouth of the house. So that's where the energy comes into the house. That's the main uh, way the energy comes into the house. And here we have door one, door two, or door three. Now, just intuitively for you guys, uh, I want you to write in the chat box which door you would recommend this family to use yeah so you can have door one door two door three right a one or a two or a three uh and tell me which one you would recommend people to use so christian says three karin says two maria says one or two camilla says one Okay, so it's pretty even, okay? <laughs> Statistically, we're kind of pretty
pretty much uh, okay, uh, evenly split between the three doors. Let me give you a little bit more information. Okay, so if you're able to take a single bite out of something, yeah, do you want to already have a mouthful or do you want to have a mouth completely empty so that you have more space? Yeah, do you want to be able to take in a lot of energy and have somewhere to store it or you don't care? Yeah. Look here. If we're looking at door one, okay, this is door one. So we have this door here, and what do we see? We have we see that there is this narrow space, which is a little bit of a blockage. Okay, if people are going to use the the house as it is described in the floor plan what you see here additionally is a wardrobe which is actually compressing things even more and constricting things even more so basically how much energy can you fit in here not as much right not as much as where well think about this one right if you go into this area there's a much bigger room and if you go into this area there's a much bigger room, yeah? So either of door two or three would be much, much better than door one, okay? So door two, imagine that once you enter into the house, you have the whole of the living room and the kitchen as an open space plus the hallway here, yeah? So you have this whole thing that you're going into. Similarly, for door three, you're going into an area which, again, it's a little bit difficult to know because if people use it exactly like it's here, here you will have a couch, right? So this couch is going to make a kind of a funnel, right? So it's going to make a kind of a tunnel that goes this way. So again, a little bit constricted because of that. So the winner is door two, yeah? Door two is the door which encounters the least obstructions when the energy comes into the house. Now, now that I've shown you this, isn't it quite obvious which one should be chosen? And it is incredibly easy to see. And Vero is, act, uh, is asking, isn't the two in the sector of obstacles? Yes, of course, this is only one level, of course. We would look at various other things. So it depends what stars we have there, it depends uh, what it is that we have there. So basically, is it the obstacles? Is it the chiming? Is it the whatever else is there? Yeah. So uh, it also depends on the flying stars. It also depends on the eight palaces. So we will take all of those into account. But when it comes to chi flow and energy, that's what matters a lot. Okay. So. Yeah, it, it really uh, depends. Let, let's just go back a little bit, okay? And take this example to the end. And let's go back and analyze these whilst we had the, the markings here, okay? So here, this door is opening on, where is it? Oh, this is the, uh, sorry. This is the upper floor. Okay, this door. So here, this door, is opening on an 8-1 combination. Yes, it is the chairman. Yeah, yes, it is the disaster sector. Okay, but flying stars, quite okay. So long term, it is a problem. Short term, not so much a problem. This one, this door here, is opening on a 3-6. Yes, we like it. Again, still a, a, a slight problem there, not as big as this one, yeah. But the thing is, the thing is, there is something that can neutralize the tuning. And this one is that here we have the kitchen. So if we place the stove here, the fire from the stove is actually going to neutralize this disaster sector. So if we can neutralize the disaster sector, because then the flying stars are good and volumetrically speaking, there's enough space for chi to flow, 
this becomes the clear winner. Okay, so this is it. That's it. Someone says that we have the stairs. We don't care about the stairs, yeah? You only care about facing the stairs if the stairs were, for example, here, yeah? So if you open the door and you face the, the stairs here, two meters from the door, yes. If you face the stairs here, no problem, okay? So that's just a myth. This is, you see, this is uh, the key thing with feng shui. There are a lot of myths, and these myths come about because in some particular cases, that happens to be true, but if, if you don't know exactly what the case is and you don't know the mechanism through which that is a problem, you just take it as a label, as a convention, and you don't know if that works or that doesn't work, if it's good or bad in that particular case. And what I want you to, uh, what, what I want to teach you guys is the exact way of how you know. If you understand the mechanism, if you understand the logic, then you can apply this to any house, okay? Some, uh, someone asks, does fire neutralize the chiming always? Yes, yes it does, yeah. So you would want to see fire in the negative sectors and not see fire in the positive sectors when it comes to uh, the school of eight palaces. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. And now we get to the last part of this one. Yeah, so uh, last step of feng shui success. Not necessary, yeah, but if we wanted to, could we improve it? Could we even amplify the energy that we want? Yes, right? So for example, yeah, let's, let's talk about business. So for example, in this particular case, you see that we have the, uh, um, the office and this person uh, has uh, really implemented this and the business is on a whole new level and it's so, so good, but for some reason they want more, right? Can we give them more? Yes, we can. So how do we proceed? We put an aquarium here. We put uh, a water feature, yeah, an aquarium. Not a fountain, not a small cup of tea. This is a full-sized aquarium. We're, we're talking about 120, 150 liters of water. Uh, and why, why is that? Because water, yeah, you, you know, you're here for a feng shui course. Shui, in the name of feng shui, refers to water. So this is in the sector of east, with these flying stars. So what is water going to amplify? Water always amplifies the facing star, okay? So obviously what is it going to amplify? It's going to amplify the two, which is related to business opportunities and uh, the possibility of getting much more money and uh, you know, increasing your assets, okay? Andrea asks in which direction? An aquarium doesn't have a direction, right? So as long as you put the aquarium here in the east sector, it doesn't matter. An aquarium does not have a direction. We're concerned with area, not direction. Only a person can have a direction or maybe a, a door or maybe a stove, yeah? But an aquarium doesn't have a direction. Okay, guys. So uh, let's move on. Okay, so I hope that this has been something that has really enticed uh, you, has made you interested in learning more, because this is not theory, guys. This is not a game. This is not a nice story. I've seen many, many people uh, the, uh, get the, um, the benefits of feng shui in an incredible way. I don't know if some of you have been to some of my previous webinars, I was telling you some of the stories, like for example, when one of my clients put such an aquarium and in three days time, she got a phone call to speak in front of 2000 people. Uh, or for example, another client of mine talking about blockages, yeah, had this, had this blockage uh, in all areas of his life. And I realized that there's something probably pertaining to him because uh, his girlfriend living in the same house was not getting it. And true enough, he had what is called a personal breaker, which is the sector that has the energy countering all the opportunities for him activated, right? So I taught him how to uh, deactivate it. And within a month and a half, his whole life had changed. 
he uh, he had been uh, much less affected by the nasty stuff going on at work. He had decided to uh, propose to his girlfriend, and he was overall much much happier. And I, he, this was a friend of mine, and I'd known him for some some years. I think four or five years at that moment, and. I saw the huge change in just uh, the span of a month, right? So I can I could go on and on and on with the success stories. It, it's the power of feng shui is incredible, right? So the question is, do you want to have this ability? Do you want to make this your thing? Do you want to make this your story? Do you want to be able to read the stories in uh, in your life in your house and be able to choose? which one is the one you want to manifest, right? Because this is what I'm uh, offering you right now. Feng Shui can be learned and I'm willing to teach you everything that I know systematically, right? So this guys, for those of you who are really serious about getting more information, this guys is for you, right? So how do we do this? Well, I've set up this uh, Feng Shui school or Feng Shui university um, and I've organized it on three levels, okay, or three tiers. And the first tier, yeah, the first tier is about putting your life in order, making sure that you are on an even keel with your life. Yeah, you minimize all the nasty things and you already start to see some uh, significant changes for the positive in your life. For someone needing to just uh, adjust their feng shui, their personal feng shui, Tier one, yeah, the standard tier is enough. But let's say that you want to uh, become a professional and you really want to know more and to want to learn all the, you know, the, 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 the tricky parts and uh, um, the deeper parts, the more nuanced things. Yeah, then the pro level is for you because that's where we're going to explore uh, some more formulas in Feng Shui and deeper levels of understanding things. And then the mastery level is the ultimate level for those who are so uh, eager to understand Feng Shui's deepest mysteries and also Feng Shui's strongest, most powerful formulas. Those formulas, those rock. Yeah. And, but the, in order to use them, you need to have all the foundation put in before, right? But for now, let's just talk about the standard one. Yeah. So I'm just, from now on, I'm just going to talk about the put your life in order part. Yeah, you wanna start with that and then think about maybe wanting more. So what is this about? Yeah, what do we learn in this uh, standard uh, tier? We uh, go through three modules. Module one is gonna teach you the fundamentals of feng shui. Module two is going to uh, teach you advanced internal feng shui, right? So it's going to go into more detail about these fundamentals. And then in module three, we go much more about the environment. And the environment is very, very important because that's where the true power comes from. Like 70%, seven zero, yeah, 70% of the whole uh, power of feng shui actually comes from what happens outside your house, uh, even before you even go inside, yeah? So that's where the true power resides. So in module three, we'll learn how to evaluate and how to adjust what is going on outside of the house. And that's where the power is. But until then, this needs to be sorted out and you have all the tools necessary to already make huge changes in your life, okay? What do we learn in the pro level? So in the pro level, the emphasis is going to be put even more so on the outside to truly harness the, um, the, the, the power from there. And then uh, in the last of the three modules in the pro, we're going to talk about tune feng shui. I'm not going to go into that, but suffice to say that this is the oldest and most powerful form of feng shui ever. And uh, this is actually what emperors in ancient China used. Yeah. So uh, you'll learn how to make this work for you. By the way, this is not done for the people who are dead. This is done for the people who are living. Yeah, that means you. And then finally, in the mastery level, we're going to deep dive into the more specialized things. Yeah, so this is a lot of Chinese names. Maybe some of you are not familiar with these. Uh, those of you that are, they, 
if you are familiar with these, you already know what they mean. Um, if not, don't go in there yet. Suffice to say that at the end of module 10, we will be able, or you will be able, to completely, uh, to, to have a, a more complete understanding by blending uh, feng shui with Baze, which is Chinese astrology, and date selection, and qi man and the 64 hexagrams, okay? So these are multiple branches of uh, oriental philosophy and Chinese metaphysics that come together to make your technique of applying feng shui even stronger, yeah? So this is why this is Master Yama, yeah? Okay, so uh, modules one, two, and three. Each module will include video lessons via Teachable, yeah? So actually, guys, talking about this one, yeah? Video lessons via Teachable. I have a special announcement to make, one of the many to come, yeah? Because I have another special announcement later on. And um, I have already put up um, the first module and I want to invite you guys to visit the page on Teachable because there the first three lessons in Feng Shui are free for you to see. I don't know if they're going to be free, uh, you know, forever, but for the time being, I've decided to uh, make them free to give you guys a preview of how we actually start learning Feng Shui in addition to what we've already covered, yeah? So the first three lessons uh, there are on me, so I just invite you to go there. So what, where do you go? Uh, there will be a, um, a link in later slides and my assistants will give you the link to, to check that out. But I do invite you to check it out because that's where you also can see the detailed curriculum of module one and module two and module three and a much more detailed description. Uh, so please uh, go there and benefit from the video lessons that are free for now. What else do we include in the course itself? It's all about practical application, right? So there's a, a whole um, spectrum of practical examples. Each of the lessons, just like I've done today, is going to be very, very practical. So not only the theory, but a lot of how we apply it. And also practical walkthroughs, meaning, you know, from start to finish. So you see how we do it. And for each module, we will have four Q&A sessions, right? So the, the course is uh, structured in such a way that you don't get the whole content at once. You get it in bite-sized chunks. So you get the content over four weeks. And you study that, and then you have we have a Q&A session, you send me the questions and then I, I answer it to you. Uh, and then we have another bite size and then you, vi you visit that, you see that. And then we have four in total Q&A sessions, yeah? That ensures that I can answer your individual questions. Of course, these video lessons, they are, will be there, they will be yours for lifetime, okay? So this is very good news for you guys. Uh, these will be yours for lifetimes. So you can watch them again and again and again. Uh, you can uh, watch them in these, in this rhythm that I'm suggesting. Yeah, so in these bite-sized chunks, uh, one a week. But I do recommend that um, you, you do it because you'll be able to ask questions. However, if for any reason you're not able to uh, keep this pace, no problem, you can uh, watch them at any time. You'll be able to uh, you know, see the Q&A sessions with other people's questions anytime. Yes, yeah? so you'll be, you'll be able to see all the lessons and all the Q&A sessions anytime after they've been filmed, okay? It's just that if you're in pace, you'll be able to ask your own questions, yeah? So that's the advantage to that. So my assistant, Laur, has uh, given you the link in the chat box. And all you need to do is to just go there and um, visit the page and see more details about this course. So yeah, let's go and take a look there, right? So when does the course start? If you're, if you're looking at the course right now, uh, the contents of it are locked because I'm going to start the course on the 17th of May. The content is already up. 
but I want to start on the 17th of May. That's when I'm going to uh, start releasing the content. But what you can do until then is log in, see the course, and enroll into the course. More on that later. Right, so module one starts on 17th of May. We have one month to go through it. And then uh, module two becomes available on the 17th of June. And then we have a month and a half between module two and module three to give you guys time to uh, digest module two. And then module three ends whenever you want because once it's released, again, everything, once it's released, will be uh, yours to view whenever, wherever you want. Okay. Chloe is asking me, will you teach Shrenkong Dagua date selection? <laughs> okay, so first of all, uh, Shrenkong Dagua date selection is date selection, it's not feng shui, uh, or it's at the border between Shrenkong Dagua, which is the Shrenkong Dagua feng shui, and the Shrenkong Dagua date selection. We will be touching upon that in uh, the, the mastery level, yeah? This is just the, the basic standard level. The Shrenkong Dagua is a very advanced system and we're going to teach that in the mastery level, so not yet. Okay, but I, I like the question. I was the one using, when I was doing the feng shui courses as a student, that would be my question, okay? So I understand that. Okay, so what about prices, yeah? So what about prices? Module one, uh, which is basically the module that in, allows you to put your life in order, yeah? You'll have all the tools and all the information there to put your life in order. So that means improving your relationships, improving your career, getting that promotion or getting that increase in cash flow if it's a business that you want or getting the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the better health. Uh, yeah, so all this is already yours for 897 euros. And then it just gets better and better and better because for module two and module three, we're adding incredibly more powerful formulas to something that is already very strong. Okay, so I'm not kidding you. Everything that I'm teaching you here, I've tried for myself and I've tried for, uh, for other people and it is incredibly powerful, yeah? But this, if you, want, if you were to go through all three modules and buy them individually, you would have to pay for them about 3,000 euros, okay? But what I'm proposing to you guys is to not get them individually, but to get them as a package. And for that, I'm actually going to give you a discount, okay? So instead of getting them individually for 3,000 uh, euros in total, if you get them together, I'm going to subtract one third of it, yeah? So instead of 3,000 euros, you're gonna pay for them 1997. How does that sound, right? So for 2,000 euros, you can become uh, pretty much an expert in your individual life. Yeah, and that will, you can make up that money. Yeah. What about if you're undecided? Yeah, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not for you, maybe, yeah. But I give you a 30 day money back guarantee after the start of module one. So from the 17th of May, you have until the 17th of June to decide whether you like it, it's for you, you apply it, you see results, you don't see results. If for any reason you decide that this is not for you or you don't like my teaching or for whatever reason, yeah, um, you can just request your money back, no questions asked, you will get that. Yeah, so you risk nothing. Okay, so this is a safe choice. Try it, see it, apply it, get the results or don't get the results, either way, you can request your money back in those 30 days, okay? So yes, Chloe is asking, will there be a support other than the four coaching calls by module? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by support other than the four coaching calls. What other form of support are you referring to? Because I'm not very clear about that. Maybe you write to me. Okay, let's make it even better, okay? Let's make it even better. Maybe, you know, it's, it's a good proposition, but maybe, you're uh, thinking, well, you know, I don't kind of have that money on me right now. 2,000 euros sounds like a lot. Uh, it's actually not. For what you're getting, it doesn't sound like a lot. Trust me. Uh, you can make this with those techniques easily and quickly, yeah? But just to make it really easy for you guys, I give you the option of 
instead of paying it a one-time payment, you can pay it a one-time payment, but I can also give you the opportunity to pay it in three installments, yeah? So three monthly installments of 697. That's already something that uh, is uh, different, right? Zuhara says, can you show discount page again? Um, uh, what, what do you mean by discount page? Yeah, this is the discount. Yeah, so instead of 3,091, you get 9,097. Or if you're asking the, uh, if, you're, if you're asking Laur, my assistant, in the chat box, he already put a, a link for you guys to visit the web page. Yeah, but, but, I want to tell you, uh, before we go on, because I have some more surprises for you. Yeah, before you go on, uh, what I did. And when I was studying, I was studying with uh, Joey Yap, some of you may have heard of him. And he actually uh, put a challenge out and he challenged us, the students, to try to make up the money that we pay for the course as fast as we can. And what I tried to do, and actually I succeeded in doing, was to make sure that everything that I learn, I apply for me and for others. And I was doing this whilst doing the course. It was also during about three months. And in those three months, I already started doing my own feng shui and the feng shui of everyone around me that I could. Initially, I think I did one or two for free and then I started charging money. And then I started charging more money because the results started to come in. And I remember that on the 20th feng shui that I did, I uh, completely uh, financed my whole course. And that was a $2,000 uh, $2, course, right? So that was what I paid for it. And I made the money back actually before the, just before the course uh, ended. So I want to uh, reach this out for you. And I want to challenge you guys to use all the knowledge that you will have access to, to make your money back by the end of the course. And if you uh, are willing to accept this challenge, I promise that during the Q&A sessions, I will give you my full support and you can ask questions. And as long as they're relevant to the course, I will do my best to answer them so that you're able to apply everything that I'm teaching and be able to get your money back. But, 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 but let's go further still, yeah? Um, Chloe asks, if we have some questions, will we be able to ask them and get answers? Well, that's what the Q&As are for, yeah? So obviously, <laughs> yes, that's what the Q&A is for. So it's, it's an organized session in which we gather all the questions and then you will be able to do so. If your question is, will you have an endless Q&A and be able to ask me any questions anytime? The answer is no, I do have other stuff to do, but there will be ample time in, you'll have four Q&A sessions in module one, four Q&A sessions in module two, four Q&A sessions in module three, that's 12 Q&A sessions, yeah? So uh, there's hardly, um, from experience, yeah, because I've taught this before and uh, I've seen this being taught before, uh, this is enough to cover basically any, any relevant question that you might have for that particular part, yeah? Right. Uh, she says, yeah, but sometimes during the Q&A questions are not really answered. Yes, yeah, I will answer them. Yes, I will answer them. Yeah, I mean, again, as long as they're relevant, yeah? I'm not gonna re uh, repeat the answers if the questions are repetitive. Anyway, guys, if you're really eager to bring fresh energy into your life, if you're really eager to get this going and make this yours and make it happen, I'm going to give you the major, yeah, the, in, in, uh, in showmanship it's called the prestige, yeah. It's the main thing that I have been holding until last. I'm going to give you an incredible discount, okay? So instead of the uh, 11.97, Actually, the, sorry, it was 1997, not 1197, yeah? Instead of the 1997 for the whole thing, I'm going to slash 60% off the price. 60%, 60%. But this only for those of you who are actually eager to do this, to make it yours now. Now meaning you have this coupon code, 
And you have this, yeah, it's called Feng Shui 60. Make sure that you make a snapshot of it. Uh, so you can apply this coupon code at the checkout when you go onto Teachable platform and you, you push the button which says enroll in the course, you're going to be taken to a checkout page and you'll be able to put in this uh, coupon. And when you do it, the, the, the price will come down from 1997 to just 798 euros yeah but guys this is only valid for the next three days okay so this is only valid until may 15th at 10 p.m roughly the time that is now right yes okay so this is 798 euros and just think yeah for 798 euros uh what else could you buy what would you else spend your money on Right? You could buy some fancy headphones or a uh, fancy watch, not too fancy because those get expensive real quick, or maybe a new phone. Yeah, but how long? How long would you would that last you? Yeah, would you probably need to buy a new set in about two, three, four, five years time at most? How long will you benefit from the knowledge that you get from Feng Shui lifetime? I guarantee you. Yeah, that's yours to happen, to have. And as long as you apply it, it gets better and better and better. And obviously with experience, you get better, right? So let's make it even better. Yeah, remember those monthly payments? Remember I was giving you the ability to buy it through three monthly payments. The coupon, the reduction of 60% applies to that as well. So basically you get to three monthly payments of 278 euros, right? So this month, next month, and the third month, you pay 278 euros. And that is it, you have, you're basically paying 278 euros per module, yeah? And that is such a steal. I pay, I actually paid 10 times more when I was doing it, yeah? So uh, <laughs> this is very, very cheap. But again, guys, same coupon, but only available if you go now. Yeah, you only have until the next three days. Yeah, three days from now. Or uh, if you don't want to apply the Feng Shui uh, 60 code, my assistant Laurentiu has already uh, placed a link in the chat box. And then you don't need to write this down. You just uh, click on the link in the chat box and uh, the discount will already have been applied. You will see that the, uh, the slash is there and it's 60% off. So you will be able to go straight there to check out and make this course yours. Make sure that you secure your place for this deal because after May 15th, the price is going to become 1997. Okay, so this is only uh, for now. So again, guys, this is back to you now. Yeah, what would you rather invest? Money is made to flow. Money is made to, you know, go and be spent on? What would you rather spend it on? Would you rather that your money is invested in learning to build harmony and happiness and abundance? This is what you're getting, yeah? This is the knowledge of how to make those choices and really make it count, okay? So the question is, you know, are you ready to make a change or not, yeah? So if you are, you want to go at shenacademy.teachable.com or just click on the link that my assistant has uh, given to you in the chat box. Do it before Saturday, May 15th, and I'll see you on the inside. Denise is asking the discount prices for the three modules. Yes, module one, module three, module, one, module one, two, and three, yeah? So instead of buying them individually and paying 3,000 euros for all, you actually can buy them at 278 per month for three months or just 798 a one-time payment. Yeah, so that's a, that's a steal. And because it's a steal, it's not gonna be there forever. Yeah, Saturday at, the, at 10 p.m. it's gone. Okay, so guys, I hope this, is, uh, this has been interesting for you and I am looking forward to the satisfaction of me hearing your success stories when you tell me how you've applied Feng Shui based on what you've learned in the course two or three months from now. 
and uh, we're going to be celebrating together your success story. Yeah. So think about what would be the first area in your life that we would like to apply from trade and think about what it costs you if you don't do it. Yeah. Okay. So guys, I wish you a wonderful evening and I'll see you on the inside. Okay. Bye.